Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, another Viva Mundo webinar. Uh, we are heading over to Dubai today with the wonderful uh, Dubai Institute of Design and Innovation. Um, they will be here to give you all information regarding their um, wonderful school and how you can join. Okay, so today, Perfect. Great. I'm going to hand over to the wonderful Hussein, who will go forward. And Thank you. after that, please ask any questions in the question box at the bottom. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we commence the uh, portfolio building, design portfolio building workshop with uh, uh, one of our faculty, Mirko uh, Danlizzo, we will uh, just go through briefly, and I, I will I will go through briefly, uh, uh, a little background on what Dubai Institute of Design Innovation is, why we were established, and what we address, and and you know uh, what we focus on in terms of design. Because design is a big word, and, and you know, it's a big buzzword that gets misconstrued. So I hope we can alleviate that today, uh, and you can uh, walk away with some uh, important life skills. So uh, the just the address, you know, we focus on tomorrow's change makers. This is what the IDI plans to do. Uh, we focus on design and innovation, and that's in the name. And, you know, uh, oftentimes innovation is the precursor. Uh, the precursors to innovation is technology and research. We were established, uh, and and our, our curriculum partners are Massachusetts Institute of, Institute of Technology, which is known to be the number one institution in the world uh, for research and technology, and also Parsons New School of Design in New York, which uh, uh, is known to be one of the number one institutions in, in the world for design, design thinking, and, and fashion. Uh, design as well. Um, we are accredited by the Ministry of Education here in the UAE, which means that the credits are transferable. Uh, so we are a recognized institution. Uh, the DNA of who we are, again, is design and innovation. Uh, we have a few assertions we'd like to go through just to, you know, sort of break down uh, why we exist. The first is that design matters more than ever. Uh, the reason for this is that everything human is designed. Uh, everything around you that you that you consume, that you occupy, the space you occupy, the clothes you wear, the the devices you use, the tools that you use, um, even the, the the spaces you live in, uh, it, it is designed uh, actively by by us, uh, and and this is very critical, to, uh, a critical foundation to, to to have in your mind. The second is uh, our second assertion is that design thinking is the key to the to innovation. Now, uh, design thinking is, 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 again, a term that's, that's uh, coming up now and more and more people now than uh, ever before understand what it is, but uh, let's just go through it. Design thinking is a six step process. It's a standard thought cycle uh, to, to resolve and, and solve um, problems. Um, and, and it goes like this. You empathize with the, with, with, the, with the situation that you're trying to resolve. You identify solutions. You ideate uh, different variations of those solutions. You prototype uh, one of your solutions, you test that solution, and then you iterate until you reach, uh, a, 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 you, know, you essentially perfect that, that solution. And this, is, this, this design thinking sort of process can be adapted to any discipline, regardless of whether you're in the, uh, whether you're in design industry or whether you're an engineer or a doctor, it's, it's an essential life skill. Now in the process of us teaching this at our institute uh, and teaching our, the next generation of designers, we happen to also be teaching essential life skills, which are tolerate uh, thinking, critical thinking, collaboration, communication, active listening, and uh, perseverance. And, and it just so happens that these life skills that are, that are brought to you by design thinking uh, happen to be the most in-demand skills as of 2020, according to the World Economic Forum. So complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, that's essentially what, what you know, design thinking summed up. Now, our third assertion is that designers are at the core of the fourth industrial revolution, which is where we are right now. As you may know, um, uh, the first industrial revolution was the steam engine, and then it was manufacturing, and then it was more, uh, you know, focused on human labor and, and uh, basically increasing the efficiency of manufacturing and, and, and production. And now we're at the fourth stage, which is the human intelligence aspect, which is, which is part of the fulfillment uh, uh, level. The, the fourth uh, assertion that we have is that designers are transforming how we solve complex problems. So when you think about any, any, any kind of uh, problem or any kind of product that you're introducing or any kind of uh, 
uh, new new uh, um, object. You're, you're thinking of the first thing, profit profitability. So you know, will it make money? Uh, will it will it be uh, able, will it be marketable? The second thing is the feasib feasibility. So will it will it work? Uh, and this is this is uh, two of the the most important things that most uh, corporations focus on, most uh, uh, manufacturing focuses on, etc. But one thing that is not quantitative, that's qualitative, uh, is the design and the desirability aspect, which is very, very critical to how things are marketed and published and used. And this is the, the emotional aspect and the fulfillment aspect, which, which is how it touches you. Uh, so if you look at these two cars, for example, they're the same specs. They're relatively two no well-known brands. They're around the same speed, same year, around the same uh, price tag. Uh, they're just two different designers and how you make your decision will be based on how these two cars make you feel uh, from the front end to the back end. And so that's what it is. Design is differentiation between those two things. So, so it's a critical component. Uh, if you look at the world, uh, the, the design value index and you look at these major world companies, the, the, the four, uh, uh, you know, the top four companies that, that had their stock price increase radically are the companies that had focused on design and had actually developed their own design departments. And if you think about Apple, Starbucks, and IBM and Nike, you're not really just buying the product, you're buying the entire experience and the brand and, and, and the service design. And, and so this is, is a critical point to make in terms of value that design gives to any corporation, regardless of uh, the institution. Design is, is in, in how we think of it, is the bridge between strategy and business and technology and engineering. It's essentially those two things and, and everything in between. Um, so what one, one key point that we need to make is, is as an institution, as an educational institution teaching this, is we need to future-proof our students. Uh, technology is, is, is on a radical exponential growth and 85% of tomorrow's jobs will not exist. Uh, so if you think about the future jobs, you know what are we talking about? We're talking about things like augmented reality designer, which is a reality now that is being done by several major corporations. Uh, 3D printed textile designer, right? Human organ designer, 3D printing actual human tissue. Um, you know, so to avoid redundancy due to this automation and due to this technology, we need to we need to focus on 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 how we can make uh, students future proof or the next generation future proof and adaptable. 50% of tomorrow of, of today's jobs will not exist in the, in the, in the next uh, decade's market. So uh, based on a study done by Google, we actually need to focus on combinatory education. This is the adaptable aspect that we, that we, that we address. So if you think about uh, uh, what we do, uh, our bachelor's degree or our program, um, we focus on four main disciplines, which is the fastest growing disciplines within the field of design, product design, multimedia design, fashion design and strategy, which is the business side of things. And one, another, one key assertion that we need to make, which, which is what is about to differentiate us from all the other institutions with, relace, with relation to design is that we can future-proof the next generation of designers through hybrid education. And this is the adaptability again factor. So if you think about the future jobs, um, you know, if you think about any industry within you know, blockchain or, or reactive, uh, responsive technology, responsive fashion, or um, you know, thinking about the business uh, involvement in design, so CDOs, et cetera. You cannot be any of, any of these future jobs if you study only one thing and you become monocentric. Essentially focusing on one discipline is not enough anymore. And so what we've done is we have levels of hybridization. Um, so as you see, you, you cannot access these jobs. Uh, what we do is we have, you know, several levels of hybridization. The first is that we teach visual liter literacy, strategic proficiency, and tech fluency all throughout the education of, of, of uh, the four years at, at, at DIBI. And the next level of hybridization is that you don't select one of those disciplines, but rather you select two and mix them together. As you can see here, you can select any two, one of these product design, multimedia, fashion, or strategy, and you could select them and you can have up to six different ways you can uh, customize your degree. Uh, this allows you to, to enter essentially every sector in every market and still maintain your field and be adaptable. And now, because of this hybridization, you have now access to these future jobs and to these jobs that, uh, you know, that will essentially dominate the industry. So if you think about IoT of furniture, Internet of Things furniture, right? So any kind of uh, uh, you know, technology-infused furniture, 
uh, wearables, smart wearables, interactive clothing, blockchain interaction, you know, ethical fashion and, and, and all the types of research that you need to do in ethical fashion. CDOs, uh, just like Peter Schreier and Kia. So this is what we are, you know, design is, you know, DIDI is design plus everything you see here. And, you know, that's what makes us who we are. We, we focus on more than, than, than just design. Uh, we're just gonna take a quick look at our students. They're from all over the world. Um, you know, we have students from 30 different nationalities. And uh, here's some of their work, just to give you a little idea of what we create. So this is one of my most, my favorite uh, projects. This is a project by uh, Nick, Nick Leish, one of our uh, top performing students. It's a, it's a device that translate colors into, uh, translates the experience of a painting into sound. So uh, anybody who's visually impaired can essentially hear a painting rather than see it. Uh, you know, and, and, and the levels of research and, and application purposes for, for such a device is, is endless. This is part of our fashion students. She created her own, uh, grew her own leather out of kombucha. So it's her own uh, organic uh, uh, leather that, that, that was created without hurting any animals. So it was actually grown in her home, uh, stunk up the place. And uh, this is uh, another one of our students in product design. She created her own alarm clock that, that measures your circadian cycle based on uh, you know, uh, different uh, you know, data points that their phone, your phone collects from your body throughout the day. And the only way to activate or turn off the phone is by putting the phone into the alarm itself. It essentially eats your phone. Again, this is one of our uh, you know, favorite projects. This is a, a project by our, our, our student Alhan, and he actually focuses on um, essentially recycling date seeds and all the waste that generates from date seeds. Uh, it's a huge market here in the UAE specifically. And so what, what they've done is they've recycled date seeds to, to, to form different organic and reusable uh, containers and food, food, say, you know, food safe containers uh, that essentially won't, won't cause uh, any pollution. This is again, one of our uh, student projects. It's a, it's a 3D printing robot. Essentially the idea was, uh, you know, it's a working prototype. So uh, it collects waste, plastic waste, and there's a working emulsifier that, that 3D prints. And it, it, was, it was essentially, I think it was built to work in a swarm. This is again one of our student projects. She, she developed a new way uh, to stitch clothing, to, to put together uh, different accessories of clothing without stitching, without the need for stitching using this modular approach. So it's very interesting stuff. Our faculty uh, joined by us today is, is Mirko, of course. And you know they're from all over the world, uh, from the top uh, you know, design institutions, from different backgrounds. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's key to point that out. Um, our campus, we're based in Dubai Design District. It's the, it's the hub of uh, design uh, here in Dubai. It's, uh, we're at the heart of it. Uh, you know, it's a great place to be, over 200 institutions and, and companies within the field of design. Uh, so it's a great place to, 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 to have this education you know, as a campus. This is our fabrication lab. It's one of the biggest in the region. Uh, you know, all the different tools that you can think of and, and machinery, our students will have access to. Uh, so any, types of, any type of fabrication, uh, can be done here. And, and you know, fabrication is critical for design. Fashion, our fashion studio also is a very extensive. And uh, just to go a quick, a briefly through our partners, we're, we're in collaboration, uh, working on projects and, and placement with you know, several institutions, over three dozen institutions as of now, and 100, 100 companies in, in, in talks with 100 companies. Uh, just to go, go over a few, we've worked with Audi, we've worked with uh, Fjord, uh, Ernest Young, Accenture, Apple. Um, and uh, just, to, just to go briefly over the admission requirements, in case you were wondering as a student, uh, our admission requirements are very basic. Uh, the application is free. You can head over to didi.ae uh, and you can start your application. It's on a rolling basis. And uh, in terms of academic requirements, we require your 10th, 11th, and 12th uh, grade reports and an English proficiency exam. So whether it's an IELTS or TOEFL or even an MSAT, if you have one of those, um, and in terms of personal documentation, obviously an ID and a personal statement. Uh, the application again is free and uh, it is, it, we're, our, we're admitting students on a rolling uh, basis. And uh, in terms of our tuition, our annual tuition, which is all inclusive, uh, including the, the, the fabrication lab and the admissions uh, on onboarding materials, it's around 98,000 UAE dirham. And uh, th this is again, all inclusive. And we also provide visa and medical insurance uh, with regards to the scholarships, we have, you know, up to 40% on financial aid and up to 25% on merit scholarships. So you, you can get 50% total uh, in an ideal scenario. So this is based on, a, on a, and it's a time sensitive uh, 
uh, thing. So if you're interested in applying, I, I suggest you apply as soon as possible within the month. And every every year we award uh, two uh, MRT national scholarships. So uh, that's that's it for the for the quick run through. Uh, identify the designer and innovator within you, and come visit us at DIDI in D3, and uh, perhaps you could be tomorrow's change maker. Feel free to email me directly. I, I manage recruitment, by the way. I forgot to mention my name. My name is Hussein uh, Javi. I, I manage recruitment here at DIDI. So if you have any questions regarding recruitment, or if you'd like to visit us, or if you have, if you want any more you know coursework material or anything like that, feel free to contact me on this email. So we can screenshot that. And uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening. Um, and I think that's it for me. I'll, I'll be handing the floor over to uh, Mirko, who is one of our faculty, uh, leading faculty, and he will uh, go through uh, today's uh, workshop. Thank you very much, uh, Hussein. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, so it's a pleasure for me here today uh, giving this uh, presentation about uh, portfolio design. And uh, as Hussein mentioned, I'm a faculty member at the IDI. Uh, uh, I teach in the foundation program, uh, studio and workshop, and also in the product design program. And um, today, uh, as we mentioned, we're going to show you, let's say, some concepts about how to uh, create your own portfolio. It's a fundamental part of uh, how to present uh, yourself, uh, not only as a, a designer, but also, I mean, if you have to, let's say, uh, communicate or let's say get in touch with companies and, and so on. So let me start with uh, uh, something simple. Let's start to understand what what a, what is a portfolio. No? So usually we, you, you just simple, simply start with a question, a simple question like that, not to understand what we're talking about. A portfolio is a collection of, uh, of your work. Uh, it's a kind of, a, we say, a visual diary uh, showcasing your creative design skills, but also your ideas. So it's very important that, you know, it's a, it's a synthesis of all these things. So basically, again, uh, it's a way to represent uh, your personality. Uh, it's a way to talk about uh, your creativity, your abilities and uh, commitment. And uh, it, it's again, a, a way to uh, talk about yourself from many different perspectives. And it, it is a very important part of an application. When, when you, uh, again, when you want to enter, for instance, the, uh, in, in the market no? or in the, to, 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 to work no? in, in real life. And uh, uh, so why do you need a portfolio? So, you know, the, the, the reasons uh, of, of why you need a portfolio are different in the sense that, of course, as we said, it's something to communicate to someone else to know who you are. Sometimes it's also uh, a good, let's say, way to understand yourself better. And it's a, uh, it's a good exercise, you know, to, uh, to, to better, let's say, investigate about what you're doing and, uh, and maybe focus also on something uh, or, or to try the right track or, or find the right track, let's say, that you want to pursue. Uh, but uh, let's say basically here, when we talk about portfolios and, and we're talking about, usually we talk about portfolio for designers, but again, it could be uh, open up to, uh, to other fields. But basically, uh, one of the main reasons is to help to assess your potentials as a designer. And obviously also, through that, I mean, showcasing your abilities to work with a variety of materials, themes, uh, subjects or fields, and so on. Uh, it's also a fundamental tool to talk about your personal interests uh, in terms of uh, research, you know, research interest and creative processes, uh, how you develop an idea. That, that is basically talking about how you think, and, uh, and that's... I would say one of the most important things nowadays to understand also, you know, to, when you create a team, uh, uh, you know, you must know, or it's very crucial and fundamental to know how the, all the members are, uh, I mean, they're able to think about, uh, uh, you know, uh, generating or solving um, a specific issue or tackling a specific problem and so on. So it's, it's really about creating also the right cultural background. And so it's very important that you showcase that uh, uh, things in, in your portfolio. And obviously it's about the technical abilities, uh, but it's kind of an 
implicit, let's say, in a way also you, you, you create and you organize the, uh, uh, the portfolio, not only in terms of the content, but also in, in, in the way you organize it in, in visually speaking. And we're gonna talk about that during the presentation. Uh, so if we, if we talk about uh, what's included in a portfolio, uh, again, it's a, kind of a, re a repetition of what we said, but let me reinforce, let me stress these uh, concepts. Uh, for sure, I mean, it's important to have examples of research. Uh, so that is again about the development of an idea. And, uh, and uh, so that means it's not just showcasing uh, a completed uh, work or a completed project or something that is, you know, uh, it has its own start and end point, but it's something that, you know, maybe it's a trajectory. So it's, uh, um, it's, a, it's an opportunity to talk about what you're interested in too and uh, uh, what you did before and what you're looking at, you know, so to kind of uh, create a, a vector, you know, to, to, to define where you want to go. Obviously, the traditional, uh, let's say, uh, content for a portfolio is the, the work that you've done and then the work that is finished in a, in a sense, no? And the suggestion is always, uh, always to, to put your uh, most recent work. And so you have to highly curate uh, and edit the work. So to uh, showcase, to filter, let's say, uh, the things that you've done and, and showcase the, the best or what you think is uh, fundamental uh, to represent yourself and your research and your work. So it's not about uh, collecting everything, but it's about selecting uh, the, uh, let's say the, the things that are uh, really important for what you want to convey. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, talking about the skills and uh, the thinking process and so on, uh, you can add, if you have a sketchbook, it's fundamental to uh, also maybe showcase the, the, the process, the working process, the working progress, sorry. Um, so the sketchbook, uh, it's a good way to, sh to show your, your, your idea in development. So how you develop your ideas uh, through sketches, notes, uh, maybe descriptions, so diagrams, you know, that it, it also gives a kind of, um, you know, human touch to, to uh, to what you see as a, let's say, final result. Another important thing that uh, uh, it's, it's good to have in a portfolio is showcase a variety of media, um, the, the way that, uh, you know, the, the, the possibility to let understand that you are work, you, know, you can work with different uh, um, uh, materials, with different uh, typology of projects, different uh, uh, questions you now that you are answering actually to different uh, uh, issues and so on. So variety is important in the sense that uh, uh, it's a way to describe you, uh, yourself, you know, with uh, uh, in depth, you know, and saying that you're not uh, simply something flat and, uh, but it, you are something that uh, uh, are a collection of different things, you know, and this is also a way to to represent them. And technically speaking, uh, obviously a portfolio could be, um, you know, uh, could, could be a collection of different, uh, very different things, you know, from uh, films, video, maybe, you know, in a, in a, in a format that it's, it is really a video, if it's a, an online portfolio, or it, it's a series of uh, still frames, you know, if it's a, a, a paper portfolio. It could be about drawings, paintings, uh, 3D prototypes, photographs of uh, prototypes. Um, could be about uh, photographs of sculptures, you know, the, the working progress of a sculpture or, or of an installation. Uh, it could be uh, written work. So uh, basically a portfolio, it's, it's really a flexible tool that could be adapted also to your creativity in the sense that uh, uh, there are a few, let's say, considerations or rules, if you want, that we're going to touch today. But uh, besides that, I mean, you know, working with these, these limits gives you the possibility then to, uh, uh, ex, you know, express your creativity uh, in, in a broader way. Uh, talking about the way uh, 
you know, to, to sh the way to, to present a portfolio, you know, there is no specific uh, format size uh, for a portfolio. Uh, um, however, I would say that uh, uh, it's, um, you know, a good practice to take in consideration that maybe uh, the person that is receiving the portfolio uh, like to look at it in a, in a, in a comfortable way. So if, it's, uh, if you send it online uh, or through an email, maybe better to have uh, or to consider that it's going to be uh, uh, read not through uh, a screen and so a, a, a landscape screen. So it, take that in consideration. Or if you uh, want to, uh, that is going to be printed, so uh, consider that maybe A4 or small or less than A4 is better than, you know, having a, um, a large size. Uh, consider again always to select the work uh, and uh, um, because it's better to be concise, synthetic uh, and focus on the on the on really the, the, the things that are communicating properly uh, in, again your skills, your um, ideas and so on. Uh, and this means also that, uh, uh, you know, sin when I say concise and synthetic, I mean also uh, in a way simple, uh, but simple, uh, not in the sense that you're just cutting off, but uh, again, uh, clear, you know, it must be clear and pleasant to be uh, read and, 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 you know, uh, used in a way sometimes. So that means that give, give breath uh, to your work, I mean, to the photographs to to the drawings uh, avoid to you know create this very confused um, uh, pages you now where there is too many things you now that there are too many things that are competing to each other but instead it's better to have you know it's even better to have only one thing that is so that you can focus and then you can uh, really you know enjoy also and uh, the order is another important thing. The, the think about the logic and um, you know the fact that uh, if you're scrolling, if you're browsing you know, a, a, a portfolio, there is a, a linear order. So why you're placing one project you know, at the beginning instead to have it at the end, for instance. And then that is also another tip. I mean, start and end. Uh, with strong work. I mean, in the sense that you have to start the presentation of your work with something that is relevant, maybe something that is uh, really re relevant for you uh, at this moment, this moment, and you and something that maybe you want to develop, and then end also with something that uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, let's say, a strong representation of uh, your interests. And um, yeah, and also, uh, Again, it, it is really about sh showing what you can do in different ways, you know, in a visual way, but not only uh, on, on, a, on a way to organize your thoughts you know, in, 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 in presenting yourself to someone else. Uh, talking about the ways, you know, uh, how you should present a portfolio, the, again, as I said, there are many ways, but usually, uh, and nowadays, I mean, it's very common to uh, share a portfolio digitally. So you can submit a portfolio via email, or you can attach it to a website, uh, or to your website, or to, to your blog, and, um, or you can use it in LinkedIn, or where you can download it. And so usually it could be in a, in a PDF format. Uh, but I would say that if you're talking about a digital version of a portfolio, it could be that you can also opt to uh, having a, a website. So using a website for, to have a, a portfolio, it's, uh, it's a good way to, it's a very contemporary way to, uh, to talk about yourself and uh, in, in, with a tool that actually it's, uh, could be used in, in, um, with a PC, a laptop, uh, uh, a desktop PC, or, or a smartphone. So uh, taking account that uh, if you're interviewed uh, or when you're invited you know, for uh, an in-person interview, uh, I would say that uh, it, it's a good thing to maybe bring your own uh, printed version of the portfolio. Uh, 
it, it's, a, it's a good practice. And also expect to receive uh, feedback about your work during the interview. So uh, that means that the portfolio, it's, it's really a kind of a gate um, uh, or, or, maybe, or maybe, you know, a kind of a bridge between you and the person that you're presenting uh, your work. No? So it's a way to talk about yourself. So use it. Uh, so you must know precisely what you have in your portfolio. The project that you're showcasing in your portfolio, it must be uh, well known in details no? <laughs> by you. Of course, you know it, but you know, sometimes uh, it's maybe you have projects that are all, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you present something in, 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 a, in a portfolio, uh, you must own it entirely. That, that this is more what I mean. Talking about, so this, is, this was a bit, you know, kind of um, what is the content, uh, what could you do, but uh, let's kind of summarize again, uh, what is about the, I mean, what is creating the portfolio. So we, we can synthesize in, in three things. So the first one is about the selection. So again, you have to select uh, the work that you want to, it's not about, again, uh, showcasing everything, it's about uh, curating uh, your uh, your production. It's about organize. Uh, so curate curation is this. Now it's about organizing uh, this content so that you uh, say also or you you also um, let's say propose you're proposing something at the beginning, something in the middle, and something to conclude. Uh, and there is a specific logic uh, behind that. And also it's about the presentation. That means it's about uh, 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 the, the quality, the visual quality that you uh, put in, in, in that. So that is a kind of a, a, a binder no? uh, between the selection and the organization of the thing, because it's, it's a way you are able to uh, attract also uh, the listener or the, or the people or the person that you're proposing in your, your portfolio. Let's have a look to all of these three Taps, let's say one by one. It's in the selection, uh, what you can do is to try to answer some questions like uh, like those. Now, what's the, the key message? So, what's the key message that I want to convey with my portfolio? No? Um, so, basically, it's it's about what I want to say. You know? uh, what I when you say that you're interested in certain things, no, it's a message that. What do I show? And that's precisely uh, connected no, with, with the key, key message. No? So how, what can I select to specifically convey uh, the key message? And, and obviously that's also related to what you have to discard. No? Maybe you have you know, a, series of, a series of projects that are all related to, to, the, to the key message, but then you know, maybe you can uh, select only the ones that are, uh, or you can, on the contrary, you can discard the ones that are mm, totally focused on that, or that are that are marginal to that. No? So it is really, it is difficult. I mean, I'm not saying that it's uh, simple, but it's a good way to start your your process. And uh, again, as I as I mentioned before, the portfolio. It's a way to to demonstrate uh, uh, different things at the same time, and um, I'm not saying that it's uh, you have to do it linearly, but it could be combined. But the point is that uh, you, you know you have the opportunity to talk about uh, the process and also the final uh, the, the, the outcome. And uh, and again, the, the process why it's important because again uh, it talks about your uh, methodology. It talks about the way you tackle specific uh, topics, no, and uh, and how, no. What are the the tools that you are using to do it? And uh, uh, for example, now if we're talking about product design, uh, it's okay to showcase also uh, the sketches, now because it's uh, it's a way to let's say to talk about. The process and what's behind, uh, you know, a final product, a uh, final object, as you can see on the right. If you talk only about that, no, it you, you're kind of um, uh, focusing on uh, on the final object. Instead, here with those uh, sketches, what you're talking about it's uh, how you think about that uh, 
problem. And, and this is just an example. Again, even in product design, you have many other ways to, to, to think about uh, an object or product. Maybe you have, you're thinking with diagrams you know, that are articulating the relationship between uh, things. This is a, let's say, more let's say, traditional way to, uh, to talk about that. And uh, organizations. So how to um, uh, organize you know, the, 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 the content? And uh, um, an approach, uh, uh, let's say a very important approach that could be adopted is the uh, understanding of who's the reader or distinguish and including you know, different readers. You know? So you have the, uh, an executive reader, a browser reader, or a scrutinizer. So different ways to, to go through uh, um, um, a page with visual content. Uh, let, let me just uh, um, explain you know, one by one what does it mean. Now, for instance, if we have a, um, a, a page you know, talking about tigers, uh, like this one here, in here you have um, a kind of a, 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 um, a way to satisfy different readers. So for example, uh, if we are talking about the executive reader, you now that is very, uh, I don't want to say superficial, but it's let's say uh, is quickly let's say going through the uh, the content. Uh, it, but anyway, even if it's a, a fast way to read, you know, you have you, you're grasping uh, the main idea. What uh, what is about this project? No, this is about a tiger. So I understand quickly, you know, that because I have a let's say. Um, the main picture, a main image, you know, that is big enough to capture my attention. So you have a hierarchy between uh, the, the figures, uh, so that I can, you know, quickly understand. Okay, what what's about? Uh, otherwise, no. Uh, you have the browser, you know, the ones that is just uh, uh, walking you know, around and uh, through different uh, parts of the, of the of the page, and then you are all, in this way. You are also satisfying that kind of reader with this kind of configuration or that you have different things, uh, more details, let's say, about uh, the topic that you're discussing. And at the same time, you have, you know, even uh, another level of, uh, let's say, definition, if you can say, or depth. So where you can uh, talk about, um, let's say, or you can detail it even more, you know, the, uh, the, the, the your description or the or the, the definition of the um, of the project. I'm not saying that you you can do everything in in uh, in one page. As I said before, it's uh, uh, it's not easy also to be synthetic in such a way. So what you can do, you can go you know uh, step by step, for instance, so that you have uh, a first page that is uh, you know. Um, satisfying the executive reader. So you have a big image and the title, for instance, then the browser, you give more information and the scrutinizer, you're giving even more information. So step by step, that could be, this is just so you know, to give an example of how to structure the information. And, and this is, uh, oh, this, uh, this topic allows me to talk about uh, what are the elements uh, for uh, a good design in terms of, um, uh, let's say the visual language. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the, 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 the big picture uh, we can, or that, you, that we have seen before, no? it's kind of a hero image. So we have hero image, good typography, white space. I mean, it seems bizarre, but you know, it's about you know, having a, um, an image that is um, immediately conveying you know what are the the values or what are the, uh, the what is the main topic they're talking about what is the the the, the, the thing you know that is e framing uh, your uh, your topic good typography is fundamental uh, to uh, help you know uh, also the uh, to have a, a, again a pleasant uh, experience in terms of uh, uh, reading the, the 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 content of your uh, of of the page, 
And everything is about a balance between uh, void and uh, mass. If we, if we can use this, uh, let me tell you what language we're coming from architecture in the sense that it's about the white space uh, and the balance between the white space and the content that you, you, that you have. And for example, in this example, uh, for instance, in this case here, you have uh, you know, uh, an image that is a photograph that is um, uh, a kind of an hero image, uh, good typography, and, uh, and also a kind of a game between the typography and uh, the, the, the hero image, so that you have, for instance, the, in this case, the C that is above and the O that is uh, behind uh, or in front and the end, so that uh, they're, you know, uh, e e uh, creating a relationship between, you know, the figure and the typography. But also there is a lot of white in the sense that, again, as I, as I, as I said before, the, the, the picture and the typography is breathing. So you have the space to, uh, uh, to embrace it in a way, you know, to, uh, to perceive it and to focus on it. Uh, but the white space doesn't mean necessarily white. Uh, maybe it's uh, like in this case here, um, a sky. So that means that uh, it's a kind of an homogeneous color. But for instance, this is something that personally I really like to, to do. So when I, when I have, a, I like to play with photographs you now that uh, they have a lot of, um, the majority of the picture you know, the, of the photograph is uh, a blue sky or something else you now with a kind of a homogeneous color so that you can use it as a background. You, know? you can use it as a white in that case. So don't be afraid to have, uh, empty uh, space. Uh, another, let's say we said the hero image, typography, and white space. Uh, this is a family, another family of elements for a good visual uh, I mean, uh, awareness. Now, what you're doing is about the, the grid. And again, we said the contrast and the balance. Uh, let's go back to the example of, uh, of, of this page from the, uh, uh, about the tiger. Uh, I don't know if, I think that you can notice that uh, there is a certain organization you know, of all the pictures. Uh, we said we mentioned the hierarchy you know, between the, uh, the size, you know, so that you have a, a big picture on the left and then smaller on the right. And this helps you to, to start, the, uh, start reading you know, from the, the left and then goes to the right. Uh, but not only that, I mean, we can uh, recognize that uh, all the, I mean, the content that you see on, on the left, but also, sorry, on the right, is organized uh, through a grid. And this is something that uh, it's very helpful in general. So when you start to construct your page, um, start with a grid. A grid is the a fundamental element that helps you to, you know, organize the content. And then, you know, you you you, you can always break the rules, but you have to start with some rules. You no, know? and when I say break the rules, I, I I mean, you see here that not all not all of them are perfectly aligned, but that's fine because maybe they are aligned vertically, vertically, not horizontally, or the other way around. And so, because of that, you're creating a variety at the same time. Uh, it's not boring at all, but uh, again, at the same time, it's also structure. And uh, uh, maybe I suggest you to, uh, you know, to do that uh, kind of uh, analysis to uh, um, other media or let's say to, to posters that you see uh, outside or advertisements and so on, and, and see if you can recognize a certain uh, structure or uh, rule you know, behind the, uh, the organization of the, of the visual content. As, as you can see here in those posters, where uh, the, the, the content, the textual content is obviously uh, aligned and structured in, in specific ways and um, very articulated maybe in some cases, like as you can see in the, uh, on the right case, or very rigid and, uh, uh, you know, uh, sober, no, like in the uh, left case. Uh, I think that um, 
I would suggest to avoid, for instance, is to treat the pictures and the photograph in this manner. And especially, I would say that uh, the exception would be if you have maybe uh, photographs of uh, book covers, for instance, or stuff like that, because, you know, and the reason is that in these cases here, you have a, a photograph of a um, uh, of something as a, of a subject now, for instance, a cake in this case, now a piece of a slice of a cake and so on. So you have something that is framed by the picture. So the suggestion is to organize it in a way that uh, you uh, are uh, aware and of the, the frame itself. And the frame is giving, you know, uh, the order uh, of the image. So um, the suggestion in this case is always to kind of structure now the uh, that doesn't mean that you have always to create this kind of square like uh, um, layout i'm just saying that it's uh, you know uh, it's difficult then to first of all to read it's not balanced uh, i'm talking about the left picture and also the the fact of having overlaps you no know, uh, doesn't work in this case so it's very difficult to to do such a thing and, and and uh, there is another uh, interesting, oh yeah, very useful actually rule that you can take in consideration is the, the rule of thirds. And, um, and it's related also to the idea of the grid. Um, and this, is, this could be actually uh, experimented directly with your camera, for instance, when you take pictures. Um, what, what does it mean here? Uh, the, what, what is the rule of third? It's that uh, a picture you can read it, you know, and uh, um, or better, you can uh, subdivide um, uh, a picture that is landscape or portrait in uh, three uh, rows and three columns, and and this is identifying in the intersection of the axis. You can have, you know, uh, uh, a different weight. Let's say so. The, the 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 most important thing should be usually in the where you see right now the uh, the big circle. And uh, uh, and again, yes, you can see the different uh, um, say example of what is in a landscape or portrait. Let me let's say jump into some. Uh, uh, Real case examples now, like in this case here, two posters of the same movie. But these two posters, they have a different uh, uh, organization of the content. I'm not talking about the colors in this case here, but it's really about uh, uh, the, the parts that are describing uh, uh, the, the, the topic. Now, it's a movie, okay. In the in the case of the left, we have the title and uh, uh, see the, the logo or whatever it is, and on. on on the lower part with all the, the details you know, and of the movie, uh, the credits. And on the upper part, you have uh, the main characters. And in the, in the center, you have, um, let's say, some scenes from the movie. On the other side, you have a completely different approach. I mean, even if, uh, uh, let's say, the main actors are in the same position, but then you have the, some scenes and other, or the antagonists, you know, the villains on the bottom, and, uh, and the title in the center. Uh, in this case here, you see two different approaches that they have some, you know, uh, on the left, you have the title on the, on the bottom and that's, a, you know, uh, a better thing to, to do because also you, you're, you know, because the title and so on is so heavy in terms of, uh, you know, there, there's a background with this, uh, uh, paper, you no, know, you have the skull, you have many elements. So the weight, uh, or better, the, that part has a weight that is better to put it lower. So that is kind of, you know, uh, uh, staying on the on the lower edge of the poster of the image. The, the, the main axles are fluctuating in a way that you're identifying, you know, uh, the, the uh, the main spot, as we said, no? so it's identifying the main character, the, the, the protagonist of the, of the movie, so on the upper uh, left. So also because you start reading the poster from that, from that point on. And, uh, and then you end uh, no, with the, 
Okay, the, the, the messages that you you need. And on, on the right, instead, you have the the title in the middle is kind of fluctuating, now it's floating uh, in the in the center, so it doesn't really have, uh, and it's kind of you know pushing the uh, the scenes that you see on the bottom, and the scenes on the bottom are kind of you know squeezed by by it. So uh, instead of breathing, uh, on the on the on the left you have the the scene that is. Uh, uh, basically uh, fusing into the figures of the actors. Uh, on, on the right, you have kind of, uh, you know, three single uh, fragments. And again, you can see this rule of the third in many other uh, posters or uh, many other examples. Again, as I said before, uh, something that you can also search, you know, and you can uh, see if it's uh, something common if it's something that works now because also here no the, the the main thing is the title data rams 10 principle for good design and that's the main focus you're looking at that then you're looking on the right so the the the, the face of the uh, in this case of data rams and then you know you have the other information on the bottom so but the main thing that you have to the first thing that you have to focus the title in that case no so upper left this is also this has to do also to the way you, I mean, I mean the, uh, the 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 reading left right. No, uh, but I I like to 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 bring you some uh, let's say more profane uh, examples like this discount uh, coupon, and and again even here we have the same uh, structure. No, so what is the main thing that you have to focus on? Okay, there is discount discount madness, not this kind of uh, claim. And uh, and then you're, you you can uh, let's say move to the face of uh, or the woman or that is uh, kind of, I don't know screaming or whatever, and then you know you can go to the information everything twenty percent off okay but the main thing is that okay there is a discount madness. And again, uh, I was saying that, yeah, other examples of other posters now where you, again, here, it's also about this uh, idea of balance between the title, title and subtitle, and uh, the figure. There is the, uh, this idea that I told you before, not of the uh, background, now that uh, there is a kind of empty space, even if it's color, that is this uh, uh, blue. And again, uh, talking about uh, something that you can experience directly. You now, when you take a picture, try to do this uh, when you take pictures. You now, try to consider this idea of the third. You know? So divide the, uh, the space of your camera uh, or the screen when, you we're taking a, when you're taking a picture with your phone in uh, three ideal uh, vertical and horizontal um, lines, and then place the main thing, you know, in in, in uh, one of the third. Then there is also, you know, the the opposite, uh, I'll say, uh, approach that is maybe uh, central perspectives and so on. But uh, uh, this is very uh, efficient as a way to organize the content. And and again, yeah, this is another example of a simple photograph using that. But again, if you analyze the, the graphic design of many, uh, let's say, product that you have maybe at home or like uh, book covers and so on, try to see if there is a grid, the organization, how is it? I mean, maybe also to criticize you know, some, in some cases, you know, the, the, the position of the, the title against maybe the, uh, the main image or the graphics of the, uh, of the cover. So as we said, uh, in synthesis, these are the elements of, uh, for a good visual uh, approach or uh, uh, design approach, you know, for uh, exp to explain uh, or to talk about your, uh, your uh, work. So the ear image, so something that is uh, uh, synthetically expressing all your, your project, good typography, so always good to, you know, take time to, uh, select a good uh, typo, the white space, and also again related to balance, contrast, and between colors and the grid. That is a fundamental tool to uh, organize and also help. Uh, uh, I mean, it it, it helps you um, to uh, to work I and mean, to assemble the pages. 
And uh, yes, here uh, I wanted just to, to share some good examples. I mean, th these are posters, but again, the principles are apply applicable not to uh, to our May 4 page of a portfolio. No? So it's, uh, it's really about that. And uh, it's about, again, hierarchy uh, be between and uh, closing also you know, the, 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 the pictures and talking about the in general about the, the project or and then going in details about some other aspect of it. Uh, the idea of working with a clean uh, page without any, as you can see here, you don't have any decoration or any stripe or whatever you know, on the on the page. It's just a white background. And you you know you use the, the typography as a, as a strong element to define uh, the character of the page. You don't need anything else. Or even here, no. So the idea of using typography in an unconventional way, so that it's not horizontal, but it's uh, tilted, no. And so that, uh, and and also the decision. I mean, the, the selection of a very good typo. Now that is, uh, when you have it in a large format, it's also expressing uh, uh, the good design of the uh, of the letters, no. So that they are kind of creating a a, a graphical. Uh, element you know, in the page, and then you have the contrast between the uh, the, the title and the, and the and the photograph. And uh, another way to uh, you know use the grid, using the grid and the con the, the textual content on a on a portfolio page. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, other examples. Just uh, uh, on on again. Don't be afraid to have white space. It's again to to give you the possibility to. Uh, I want really to stress that idea to give the possibility to uh, rest on a, on a, on a uh, on a page and and to kind of uh, you know having the possibility to to really absorb the the content of it instead of uh, you know confused. And it's really about uh, depurating the the idea. So again, in 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 synthesis, uh, the, the portfolio must be and must have uh, uh, must define the you know clarity, uh, must define your expertise, um, the quality. I mean, it must be curated uh, because it's representing yourself. No, and also it, it must be curated not only because of that, but because it you can express your personality. So, through it now so so in the sense that if you're a person that uh, uh so i'll give an example if you if you're presenting uh an old black and white uh, uh portfolio uh it's a bold statement for instance and uh, it's it could be a challenge in a way but it's also something that it says no okay you you have a specific uh, uh, i mean um, an intriguing personality and maybe you know a way rational uh, uh, personality. Uh, instead, if you have very colorful and uh, rich uh, portfolio with a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, elements that are intermixing each other and so on, maybe when you want to communicate this, so your uh, emotional personality. So again, it's very, uh, it's a very powerful tool to, to really express uh, who you are. The important thing is that you do it uh, uh, with quality and what you can do, you can also, you know, when you're doing a portfolio, uh, show, show it to, to different people, not to see the reactions and what they're thinking about. That's it. So this is, uh, uh, let's say, the quick journey about on how to think about uh, uh, the portfolio. And uh, here we are. I'm open to two questions if you have. I don't know if we have the time. Great. Thank you. Yes, we've got plenty of time. Um, that was a brilliant presentation. Very, very informative. Um, I absolutely love the freedom of design and, and you know, really being able to express yourself. Um, we do have some questions here for you. Uh, so I'm going to kickstart the questions now, if that's OK. Um, question one, if creating a website, okay with the portfolio or is that acceptable or does it have to be a physical printout book 
No, uh, yeah, that's a good question because, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, printed out. Uh, there are, in this, I mean, to say there are many reasons to do that. I mean, uh, it could be also to, you know, say paper or because, I mean, but the point is that uh, uh, doing a, a website, it's a very agile way to make a portfolio because you can, you know, always... Uh, uh, update it, uh, you can, uh, it, it's more flexible than a paper portfolio, for sure. Uh, it's also a way to represent yourself, because I'm saying again, uh, if you're a, a person that uh, can't a lot about the materiality of things, maybe you want or would like to have something that is physical, no? like a, a physical uh, portfolio. If not, maybe it's enough uh, a digital one. And again, a digital portfolio is very flexible, not only when you have to make it, but also when you have to distribute it. Now, for instance, you can distribute it simply with a link. So you just send a link uh, and, uh, and that's uh, much appreciated from people that have to, you know. You know, for instance, if you, if you send a PDF uh, as a portfolio, uh, uh, try to have a portfolio that is let's say no more than five megabytes uh, it's it's again uh, something related to you know giving the possibility to uh, avoiding you know, uh, uh, you know it's more it's it's much easier to have something that is uh, smaller in terms of size and because then you can use it with different uh, devices you no know? uh, also in your phone, you can have a look at it in your phone and so on. So that's the reason why I'm saying that if you have a website, or if you do, if you make a website as a portfolio, it's uh, it's a good choice because then there are many advantages. Yeah, uh, I would say that only if it's requested uh, specifically uh, to have a physical one, then yeah, then you have to do it. Otherwise, yeah, it, nowadays it's fine to have a a good. Uh, online portfolio. Okay, thank you. I think that's definitely very relevant. And also, I just want to let everybody know um, that this will be a recording sent to you uh, post webinar. So if you do have any questions, or if you want to pause things and go back, um, feel free to. Uh, but the next question, so it's kind of similar to what you were saying before. Um, should I focus on adding pro projects that reflect me? Or should I add all my projects into my portfolio? Uh, no, exactly. It, it, it's very relevant because it's, uh, and I perfectly understand because it happens to me a lot also. It happened when I had to uh, create my portfolio. So you, you want, because you want to express yourself, you, you, you feel the urge to, uh, to put everything. Uh, but uh, uh, I would say that that approach is, uh, is not going, it doesn't go, I mean, it, it, it's counterproductive. So in a sense that uh, it's better to be uh, synthetic and uh, just to put the project that really are, uh, let's say, the contributing to a way to ex express what, what, you, what, what you are interested in, in and uh, what are your abilities and so on. Eventually, what I can say is that if you feel really this need you not know, to, to put uh, other project, maybe you can do a kind of a, a summary, maybe with uh, only one, one hero image, you know, one picture that is synthesizing the, the project that you want to include, but you're not going in depth. But remember that all the project that you present in the portfolio, uh, the, the people that is in front of you, you could ask about that project, maybe more details. And if you don't have the material to describe that in details, then it's, you know, uh, doesn't work on, on your, uh, the, so it's better to be, uh, to have less with more quality in terms of uh, yeah. Uh, curation. Yeah, totally understood. Um, next question. Do you think that it is interesting to create a portfolio with a storytelling idea? Absolutely. So uh, the point is that it depends also on uh, who's your uh, target, no? So uh, depends on, on many many factors. But yes, I mean that's a great idea. I mean, if you can narrate, I mean your story. I mean, if you can build up your a storytelling, talking about the maybe the evolution of your sensitivity for your project and so on, that's uh, a plus for sure. 
Great. And would you would you say representing, let's say, from culture experience as well? So, sorry. And would you say from a cultural experience as well? So you know, depending on your cultures as well, you know, influencing yeah. your portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, in the sense that uh, uh, again, uh, all these are elements that are able to. Uh, describe the way you think. So if you are uh, able to talk about uh, maybe an experience that you have, no? uh, or a series of experiences that you have that maybe they're related or not to a project or to something that is uh, you know, uh, an outcome of that experience, but even just describing an experience through uh, a narration style, I mean, and so on, it's, uh, first of all, it's something that is not so common to, to see. So, it grabs the attention of the reader for sure, and that's something that you know. For instance, if you're if you want to apply to a, a big um, studio or, or a big uh, design or architecture office or whatever, no, it's very difficult to uh, you know to to be noticed. So the point is that uh, it, using creativity and uh, different ways of storytelling uh, to talk about yourself and, and, and also to express yourself through a portfolio, it's a way to actually be noticed, no? So in the sense that when I yeah. see a portfolio that is uh, outside the norm, and I'm not saying uh, that, I mean, that means that again, that is uh, talking about the uh, uh, experiences that it's talking about, or maybe that it is using again, uh, I know illustrations not to talk about uh, uh, your project and so on uh, and uh, so it, it's something that absolutely uh, could work and uh, it, it, it for sure is appreciated and uh, gives you a, a plus you know, in terms of Awesome, thank you. Well, we have one more question um, and it's a bit of a long one, so I will start for you. Um, as you said about black and white portfolios having challenges, is it possible to use abstract and surreal visuals based on the designer's creativity or any other ways to improve a black and white portfolio? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the point is that according to so what you put in the portfolio, as we said at the beginning, no? So everything is, uh, let's say, important to express uh, your idea or, uh, the, the, let's say, the, your approach to things. And, uh, and this is exactly that in the sense that if you are able, let's say, to talk about your project in a way that is not a traditional way, so that, for instance, if you're a product designer, you use the a photograph of the object, but instead, instead of that, you use uh, you make a video. For instance, I give an example of users, no, and the experience and the inter the new inter uh, relationships that uh, this object is creating. That's something, uh, let's say, beyond the simpler re representation of of a, of a of a project, but is more about. Uh, uh, your interests. So, because maybe uh, if you do that, no, it, I as a reader, I, I I can understand that you are interested more in that than the simply the object per se. But you're interested in how the object is uh, re relating to uh, other objects, how it is used by people, how is creating new opportunities uh, of interaction between uh, humans, for instance, no, or animals and uh, humans and so on, and uh, so. Going back to the specificity, let's say of the of the question, absolutely. So if you um, if you use abstraction and uh, and uh, to to represent a, a project, you're giving another level of understanding of it. So it is an opportunity to, for me, to understand your sensitivity in the sense that ah, okay, so you can also talk about uh, this kind of project in such a manner, so in a way that is. Much more refined and much more articulated than simply, you know, uh, showcasing something that uh, obviously it's uh, a result of uh, uh, a lot of time uh, of collaborations and so on. And so on. I hope that I answered to this question. Oh, yes, I think you, you definitely detailed that quite well, which is perfect. Um, well, that's kind of the end at the moment of uh, the questions Q&A sessions. Um, if you do have any other further questions, I would definitely uh, recommend if Hussein, I don't know if you can share your screen to put the contact us 
uh, page on just to remind some students of where to contact you. Sure. Well, well just give me a moment. No problem. Well, in between uh, all of this, I just want to say thank you to the presenta presenters and presentation. It's been brilliant, uh, very, very informative. Lots of informa in interesting information there for you to unpack. Um, now, here is the Contact Us page. So if you do have any questions, please do email the email below um, and they will definitely get in touch with you. Like I said, this webinar will be sent to you in an email so do not hesitate uh, to get in contact if you have any further questions whatsoever um any last words from you Mirko? no uh, thank you all for uh, i mean uh, this webinar and uh, that's it i mean if you i'm happy to answer to other questions if you have in the future uh we're always welcome welcoming you to interact with us all right, awesome. Well, if anyone has anything else to say, let me know. And if not, well, thank you for your questions. And we will see you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye-bye.